Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be discussing an old video that uh, Norman Wilberger produced on the meaning of limits and what the so-called definition actually means. It's not really a definition property, but let's see uh, why even Wilberger doesn't actually understand uh, the exact definition and why he's right that it is very uh, obfuscated, very flawed, and his proof, his proof of that very fact. So let's begin. Now, um, let's take this function, which is given by this blue function here, blue curve, which is given by this function up here, s of n is equal to a third uh, times 1 minus 10 to the minus n. So, so this function is asymptotic uh, to the line y is equal to one third. As you can see, this red dotted line. And now what the mainstream def definition, it's not a definition, as I said, it's a property, says is this. Uh, for each real number, for, for, well, first of all, there's no such thing as a real number, but let's leave that alone for the time being. It should actually say for each magnitude, epsilon greater than zero. There exists, and it doesn't have to say a natural number, it can just say a number n, such because uh, a natural number is still a number, such that for every natural number n greater or equal to n, we have that the distance between the terms x sub n and x is less than epsilon, okay? So even this, defini this so-called definition here is not, strictly speaking, uh, clear because it doesn't say anything about this natural number n. And you'll see now Wilberger doesn't really address that. All he says, all that Wilberger says is that n lies somewhere between here. But really what you need, what you need is an n that satisfies this inequality. In other words, s of the absolute value of s of n minus one third less than epsilon uh, will imply will imply that any n greater than this one on this side, and it doesn't really imply that either, because as you'll see, if if the n is not at the start of where the curve meets the boundary of the epsilon, then it won't be true. Um, so, for example, if n is over here, then even a lesser look, this green is actually less than the red. But this here is still true. 0 0.067 is less than 0 0.08. Okay, so even mainstream academics are incorrigibly stupid and fail to pay attention to detail. Okay, so you need this to be satisfied. So it's kind of circular because it's actually using the formula itself. And now uh, finding n. So n has this relationship. If we take this... Uh, relationship that's acquired on the left here, this inequality, and we square it out, we see that it's okay as long as the value of this expression is less than zero. So anywhere along here, let's just do that, anywhere along here is zero is okay, see? The minute we try to go out, then it's, then we've got a problem. So um, that I'm using the wrong one. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this one. So it's okay anywhere along here, but the minute we go out of the epsilon range with this SN, with this SN, then it's not okay, okay? So this, this is okay even on, even for a lesser N, as long as it's within the epsilon range, okay? Now, so what is, what is the problem here? The problem is that they don't state explicitly that there exists an n, uh, which is which is in which is a natural number. They just basically think that as long as n is in here, then any n greater will satisfy it. That's true, but also it might be the case that certain n's less than will also satisfy. It. See, for example, those n's less there still satisfy. It. And of course, if it falls out, well then it's not okay anymore, right? Not okay anymore. So, um, 
the mainstream so-called definition, it's not at all a definition because it uses the limit. Okay, so it uses the limit. So this here says xn minus x, and Wilbergers has it completely different. He says uh, s of n minus one third, and this Wilberger is more correct because this is the correct way to do it. That terms are that terms are getting close to each other. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean it converges. Okay, so this this here would not refer to a particular function like the one I'm demonstrating. So here, this wouldn't work. You'd need the function uh, of n and the function of x, as you see over here. Now, it doesn't matter which website you go to. Um, they're all stated differently, and they're all confused, and they all don't know what's going on. Uh, so they're all totally clueless when it comes to the subject of limits, which is actually worthless to teach in calculus. It's not at all required, and my new calculus is proof of that but they still insist on uh, torturing students with this garbage because it's actually pure garbage. Uh, the fact that for every epsilon, for every magnitude of epsilon greater than zero, there is this n, which is kind of circular because we're using the sequence itself, uh, that can be found such that any greater n will mean that the equality, inequality is true, is, is obviously a property of the limit. It's not a definition. You need the limit itself, and here's the limit, one-third. Look what happens here. This is the limit, okay? One-third is the limit, right? So that's pretty much it. My name is John Gabriel. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, become a subscriber, click like, and spread the news. <clears throat> also, you can donate money to me on my Odyssey channel or you can donate credits, whichever you prefer. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, hope to be chatting with you soon in the future about another interesting video. Till next time, I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Goodbye.